Hi, and welcome to Kompsky Corner. Today we're going to be talking about operating systems. This video is specifically for the new OCR GCSE Computer Science course. However, it's applicable for most exam boards. So first, what is an operating system? Well, the OS is a suite of programs that manage all the hardware, memory, and processes running on your computer. There are many different types of operating systems that different companies create for their devices. Some of the ones you may have heard of include Apple's Mac OS, Microsoft's Windows, Linux, and there are many, many more. But all these operating systems all do the same thing and have the same purposes. They provide a user interface that allows the user to communicate with the computer. They manage the memory, hardware, and files on the computer and they take care of user management and user access. We will go through these jobs in a little bit more detail now. So starting with the fact that the OS provides the user interface. As we've just mentioned, a user interface allows the user to interact, communicate, and make requests to the computer. There are different types of user interfaces, and the first is WIMP, which stands for Windows, Icons, Menus, and Pointers. This type of user interface uses these features to allow you to do things like click on icons with the mouse, scroll up and down pages, type into forms, and more. The next type of user interface is called the command line interface. This is just a text prompt with no icons, menus, or mouse clicks, where the user simply types in commands. Programmers often use this as it is a simple and direct way of controlling a program, however it is slightly more technical and less user friendly. Lastly, we have the GUI, or the Graphical User Interface. This, as the name suggests, makes use of graphics and interactive visual components, like symbols, buttons, and icons for the user to interact with. Much like the WIMP interface, they are simple for the user to use and easy to navigate. The next job of the OS is to manage the device's memory. It does this by allocating programs to a specific place in memory so that they can be quickly retrieved, as well as ensuring that memory is shared fairly between programs. The OS is also responsible for switching from one application to another to enable multitasking. This is where the user can have multiple programs running and can swap easily between them. For example, the user can be checking their emails whilst writing an essay in a Word document. Managing peripherals and device drivers is another important role of the operating system. Peripherals are basically just the hardware used by the computer that is not part of the CPU. So this includes your mouse, your keyboard, USB stick, printer, among other things. The OS manages these peripherals and the data transferred between the peripherals and the CPU with the help of device drivers. So, device drivers are programs that provide an interface and a means of communication between the operating system and the peripherals. So if we take the printer for example, if you are trying to print a document, the operating system must use the driver to communicate with the printer to see if it is switched on, ready to print, and things like that before it can send the data to be printed from a space in memory to the printer. Now, the space in memory that we've just mentioned where the OS sends the data to is called a buffer, and it is an area of RAM, and it stores data to allow the OS to continue with other tasks. So in the example of the printer, it stores the document you want to print so that the OS can go and check that the printer is online and ready and all that. The advantage of buffering, so using this buffer, is that it compensates for the difference in speeds between the rate the data is received for printing or streaming, and the rate at which it can be printed or streamed. So basically what that means is it compensates for the difference in speeds between the output device, which is the printer, and the CPU. The operating system also takes care of user management. This allows the network administrator to do many things, with the one you're probably most familiar with being setting different access rights for different users. You might have seen this in school, where you click on a file or a folder and you see that you get this pop-up message. This is your operating system alerting you that your network administrator has restricted access to the file or folder. But user management includes other things as well. 
such as allocating accounts, identifying users on the network, how much time they spend on the network, logging users out, etc. File management also includes many jobs for the OS to control. These include allowing the user to create, name, save, modify, copy, delete, search for, move, and restore files. Basically, anything you could do to a file's properties and its location is managed by the file management portion of the OS. File management also includes keeping track of the location of files so they can be easily accessed, maintaining access to files, and preventing two people from attempting to access or edit the same file at the same time, as this could cause lost updates or changes to the file. In this video, we have looked at operating systems what they are and their various roles, including providing a user interface and managing memory, peripherals, users, and files. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. See you next time. Bye!